Everybody, please welcome Lee Daniels. I mean, I, Wait I mean, a minute, I gotta say, I'm hearing this as I'm walking on yeah. the first gay African whatever. Yeah. I'm not gay. Where'd you get that from? No, we didn't say you're gay. You did, I heard it, it was gay. You gay. But no. I'm gay. It means you're happy, mother. I'm happy. <laughs> 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 He's like, what's going on Wait, here? First of all, <laughs> let, me, let me be honest with you. Let me be honest with you. Let me, if you were gay or not, I don't care. None all of my right, business, baby. right? Whatever right. makes you happy. All right. Um, but congratulations. I'm happy, yeah. What a I'm, film. Yeah, thank you very much. D does, do you know what you're getting when you set out to make a picture like this? Because, I mean, you knew what the script was and you knew what the story was, but do you know it's going to be this impactful? No, I don't. I tell what's in my heart. I tell what's here in my heart and uh, what I think the world needs to know about faces that are never... Uh, seen and voices that are never heard. To get to that, though, aside from telling the story, but to understand that story and tell that story, what's that process like for you, understanding who these people are in this film? Uh, well, I didn't go to film school, and uh, I've had many lives, you know, doing many things. You know, I was um, raised in the projects in Philadelphia, in a very impoverished sort of background, and I've w witnessed many things. And I think that uh, I bring my life to uh, everything that I do work-wise. Mm -hmm. All of my cinema is really indicative of the past that I've had and family members or friends that have been uh, a part of uh, my head, my upbringing. Because for you to tell that story, then you have to live that story, right? So if, if it all comes out in your work, which mm -hmm. is natural, it means that it's always top of mind. And if it's not an, I mean, you wouldn't describe it as an easy upbringing, right? No, no, but I think that, I, I don't think that Precious is, is necessarily about a black girl. It happens that I'm a black filmmaker yeah. and that it's a black family. But this is a universal story. Literacy, obesity, uh, self-esteem, uh, you know, the uh, abuse. Mm -hmm. this, these are all... Uh, well, that's everybody's tale. Yeah, so I think that I happen to tell it from my perspective, which uh, is... Uh, from a black sort of perspective. Mm -hmm. the, um, the research to make a film like this, um, what was that like for you? I know you spent some time working, um, you saw the suffering that a lot, especially a lot of women went through when you went to do the research about you know, AIDS patients. Hardcore. And all that. Yeah. Um, well, I thought that I was, you know, I wanted to understand about HIV. And uh, so I went to the gay men's health crisis in New York City expecting to see uh, gay men, mm -hmm. but they weren't there. It wasn't nothing but black women there. Yeah. Like, it, it was like, whoa, what am I walking into? And I thought it was maybe I was walking into social services, somebody, you know, it's like a welfare sort of, but it wasn't. These were women, a C is like a bunch of women that had HIV. It was very telling. It was very upsetting. And uh, what, what, did you, what did you get from that? What did it tell you? I got that it's time for African-American men to come out of the closet. A lot of these FedEx workers, not that I ain't got none of got FedEx, don't come after me FedEx, <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, or these, you know, trash men, these really machismo sort of men, the, but when you're from a specific class, you are, your mother says you can't, your father says you can't, your church says you can't, your environment says you can't. So what happens is that these black men are in the closet and they're infecting African, they're killing African American women because they can't be free. So uh, the gay thing is not something I, you know, I'm not walking around saying, hey, here I am, woo, you know? It's not if that, you did uh, it like that, everybody <laughs> would know. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's important for me to, to, to make that statement because I think that it is, uh, it's the difference between life and death. Something I talked about off the top of the show was the spectacular performance you got out of Mariah Carey. Um, I say that because, and I'm sure you've heard it before too, um, I don't think a lot of people had a lot of confidence in Mariah Carey as an actress um, based on some of the past work. And to be cast in this role, mm -hmm. uh, what you did with her was out of this world. Like, what a performance. But I actually think, and I can't believe it was coming out of my lips, but if Mariah Carey got an Oscar nomination, I don't know a single person that would have said, no, she doesn't deserve that. She mm -hmm. was so good. But that can't, I've interviewed Mariah. That could not have been easy for you to get that performance No, over. it wasn't easy, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but we are, you know, what happened was was that she, tr Helen Marin was supposed to play the role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Helen called me up, I, Helen called me up and had, she had a real job. Helen was like, because we don't pay no money on a right. Lee Daniel set, you know? <laughs> I ain't got nothing to pay you. But so they roll, it's like rolling your sleeves up and it's like going to work in theater. Right. And so Helen was like, Lee, this is three days before we're shooting. I don't know. I got this other job and I can't, I couldn't blame her because it was a paying job and she's a friend of mine. So, uh, then Mariah calls me up like three hours later, four hours later, darling, what are you doing? Come over for a glass of champagne. I went, no, Mariah, I'm working. I gotta find this uh, this character. And this the only gay man on the planet that said no to Mariah Carey for drinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was. Really? I was focused on trying to f replace uh, Helen. And she said, I love that book, Push, because it's, it's called based on the book Push. And I go, hmm. So I hung up the phone with Mariah, called Helen back, said, Helen, what do you think of Mariah stepping in? And Helen said to me, Lee, I can do this with my eyes closed. And she could, you know? She says, but if you can pull out of Mariah, then you're onto something. And I went, wow, maybe this is God saying, mm -hmm. I'm onto something. And so what I did was, I called Mariah back and said, Mariah, I want you to arrive in a taxi. Mariah, I want you to, you're not gonna have any makeup on, and I'm gonna make you uglier. I'm gonna, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I bet you she didn't hear that in a nice way. <laughs> no one hears that in a nice way. <laughs> oh, I don't mean, oh, Mariah, where's the camera? I didn't mean it like that, Mariah. You are beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Mariah. Um, the, um, but, but I wanted to make her plainer, is the word. And, and so... Uh, <laughs> She's watching right now, by yeah. the way. She's here. I put, gray, I put gray under her eyes. I put, a mu I put a mustache on her. I dyed her hair and everything. And, uh, and then I gave her this heinous overhead lighting. And, and, uh, and she's sitting with Gabby, and she's sitting with Monique. Mm -hmm. And you cannot help but drop to a place of complete and utter honesty. And I knew that when we were putting the, uh, when we were putting the rayon and, and the gabardine, that cheap gabardine material on her hands, and her hands were like shaking like this, I went, oh, we're gonna have some fun. Because <laughs> you know? she was having a reaction to the yes. rayon. We yes. all would have the reaction, though. <laughs> but actually, I, I, and I'll tell you what, for all the criticism that she would get, uh, and I think Diddy got some of the similar before you cast him, was the, um, was it's nice when someone can kind of let go of their own bullshit and allow themselves to be vulnerable, because maybe then you can get the performance. Um, when you worked with Helen Mirren, who was the opposite in terms of experience and how she carried, what was it like directing somebody like the lady? Well, that, that was intimidating. The first, uh, the first um, shot, I like to get my sex scenes out of the way first. So it was a sex scene in the park, and, uh, I said, and it was, she had a birthday hat on. I said, Helen, put the birthday hat on. And this is the first day of shooting. And she's like, she's like no, I won't put the birthday hat on. I go, huh? And I'm thinking, huh? I'm the director. I was like, put the, put the hat on. <laughs> and she says, no, I won't. <laughs> and the whole crew And watching. everybody's like, it's like a tennis match. <laughs> I said, Helen, you might not have been, uh, I said, you might have been knighted by the Queen of England, but you have not been cut by a queen from Harlem. Put that <laughs> hat on now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, we, and we have been best of friends. And she responded to that, right? Oh, yeah. She, you know, she didn't want to get cut. But we, we, uh, <laughs> we have been uh, best of friends. And also, she's, she's, uh, she's an important figure in my life. We, she was going to work with me again. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to working with her again and again and again. You, you, you establish a cadence, a rhythm. Once you work with an actor, like, you know, you understand them in here and in here. Well, what was the morning of the Oscar nominations like when, you, when, when they got it? I mean, I know, obviously, people had talked about your show. Uh, previous award shows had recognized Precious, and we, you knew that you were, it wasn't, uh, you know, an out of the blue. But what's still Oscar nomination morning like for you? Um, well, well, the many Oscar nominations yeah. the mornings <laughs> I've had. Uh, the, the one that I've had. <laughs> no, um, and actually, with Monsters yeah, Ball, Monster too. Monsters Ball, of course, yeah. yeah um, the, um, it was pretty surreal. We, we, uh, we had a, uh, I was in bed. And you know what they do is they do in an alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. So they go, they name the actresses, supporting actresses, so Monique, check, good. Then they go to Gabby, check, good. But it's all in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. So the, the first one was Catherine Bigelow, and it was James Cameron. And then they said Quentin Tarantino went, what? Because they skipped a D, Daniels. Yeah. And I just went back to, ah, oh, nuts. And just as I laid back down, they said in Lee Daniels, and I jumped. I jumped because they did it in Alpha via film. Oh. So it was, dude, it was, uh, it was crazy. Because I thought I, you know, and then I did. And so it was, uh, and I, I think it was, uh, it was probably the, 
was a highlight. Well, I'll tell you, and, and, and you know, obviously the culture is changing, and, and you know, racial, you know, um, not tensions are going away because they still exist in some regions, but it's becoming more of an open culture. There is a black president and all that. Mariah Carey, and, and you talk about what Halle, when Halle Berry won her award, but you're still only the second African American director to get a nomination for best director, right? right? John Singleton got yeah. it first for Boys in the Hood. Isn't that, it's, I mean, how do uh, I mean, I, um, I don't quite know how to, um, I think that I can't scream racism. I think racism is a really cheap sort of out. Mm -hmm. I think it's about nepotism. I think it's about like being in the club. Mm -hmm. You know, with Catherine Bigelow, she's the first woman to win. You know, it's about establish, and, and it takes a moment. It really takes a moment to be in the club. And uh, I am, I know that what this, what this does is, is that it inspires not just African American filmmakers, but gay filmmakers, mm -hmm. uh, Puerto Rican filmmakers, Filmmakers that don't have a voice, that feel that they're not in a club, it inspires them to now get in the club. You, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I've mean, heard you say before, right, that you find your films to be uplifting. I thought when I watched Precious that for a good chunk of that film that I was just getting punched. Like, it was like, <laughs> oh, oh, god damn, oh, every, like, it just kept going. And then I was like, I know he's looking for, he's got redemption in there somewhere, <laughs> but I gotta work to get redemption out of uh, this. I, and I'm sure you get that a lot. I mean, to you it's uplifting. I do. Yeah. I do. It is uplifting. Come on. Even when I thought, man, I'm not going to spoil it for people because people need to see this, but even when I thought, okay, 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 then there's this thing and I went, no way. <laughs> but look, here's yeah. the thing, here's the thing. What it is is it's a slice of life. And I think that as with Raging Bull, mm -hmm. as with uh, The Godfather, not that I'm comparing those brilliant films to my little tiny precious. Dude, precious is a great film. Thank you. It's a great film. But I think that you have to look at it. How did you feel after walking out of Godfather and everybody's shot? Yeah. And Raging Bull, and was like, whoa, he, you know, he's punching his wife. And what, yeah. you know, it's, 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 truth is very, very hard yes. to take. It's very hard to take. At least we fantasize with it, you know what I mean? At least she's dancing, you know? <laughs> you know, we're, we're having a party. Your film it puts the verite in cinema verite for sure. Like there is some, <laughs> it feels um, very real. I was thinking about you, something you were saying before about not being in the club uh, yeah. in Hollywood. And I was thinking about you when you say that about the new Hollywood. Vanity Fair has got the cover. And now, just when I thought this interview was going good, skinny white women. Here we go. Skinny white women. Skinny all over white the women. And I don't have Monique or Gabby here. Right. To, and I, and I and I'm not a skinny white woman. So what do you, <laughs> what do you want to know? I'm just curious about uh, your thoughts. My thoughts. Yes. My thoughts are is is that Annie Leibovitz shot the f out of us inside. Yeah. Me and Gabby and Monique. I'm really. I was blown away by that uh, mm -hmm. thing. And I think that uh, if Vanity Fair feels that they are the future of Hollywood, uh -huh. then it's up to me to continue to make preciouses. I completely agree with you. You. Because she, that big chick. That's the future of Hollywood. Yeah. Of course. Okay. It is. She was. What's it like working with somebody who doesn't, you know, who's, who's it seems as new at this? The audience doesn't know. She's she's just breathtakingly. She's uh, an inspiration. She reminded me that I was prejudiced. Yeah. She. Yeah, man. I mean, like I thought, and who am I to be prejudiced? You know, I'm black. I'm gay. There's no, you know, but in my back of my head, like, I had this thing about overweight people and people that looked a certain way, and, and I learned so much about her that she's, you know, I thought they were lazy and slovenly and not very smart, and she's certainly, you know, a lot smarter than me, okay? <laughs> and, and, and a lot, I mean, she's just, she's a miracle. She's a miracle, and she gets it. She's funny, and, uh, and she taught me a lot. And I think that she will teach many people that are seeing the film a lot. You've worked with a lot of really talented people who, who have been known and who haven't been known. But have you got, now that you've made a few pictures that have gotten some attention, and I mean, you're talking an Oscar nomination, that's no, you know, that's no fluke. So who do you want next? Is there somebody who said, this is going to get me to work with this person now? Um, I, I never look at it like that. I look at the material. You know, I, I feel like it's all about Come the on, really? work. Yeah. I believe that, but is there an actor that you've been dying to work with, an actress? I love all of them. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I think it's harder to work with a megastar because you have to then prove to that to the to, to, to that world to the to the medium to the audience that it's not the megastar doing and they become set in their ways so is it challenging to work with Mariah Carey or Puffy that people have this over the life persona absolutely and I get off on that in, in, in small increments but to work with uh, it's about the story ultimately and I think that uh, 
But, but I'll ask you who I want to, who would I work with? I work with Susan Lucci from All My Children. Really? I you got to get said, her an Oscar. You know, do you know who Susan Lucci is? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Much, I'm sort of, I'd be, I'd be, I've met everybody from Meryl Streep to Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> I'd be really like blown away to meet Susan Lucci. She's sort of hot. <laughs> you could. You? She's sort of hot. Yeah, she's right? not sort of. There's no sort of, no, there's no sort of. You couldn't have picked a better answer. Lee Daniels, everyone. Great to see you. <laughs>